What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and yesterday Apple has released iOS 16.1 Beta 3 to developers, and earlier today they released Public Beta 3 to Public Beta testers. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new in iOS 16.1 Beta 3. We're going to take a look at the build number by going to Settings, General, and then About. We see that the build number is 20B5056E. If we were to take a look at the Discord right here, you notice that it was 20B5050F. And if you like to get notified whenever there's a new iOS update, join the Discord server down in the description below. So we got an increment here from 0 to 6, up by 6. This E right here is indicating that we are somehow getting farther away from the final release of iOS 16.1. Don't know why? Hopefully we get closer. If we were to take a look at settings, scroll down to the App Store, we have a new feature down here called in-app content. This in-app content feature right here will basically just download stuff from the web from stuff like Plants vs. Zombies right here. I'm actually going to show you that in action right now. Alright, so if I were to press this download button right here, it will start downloading the app right away. And when it's done, it's supposedly going to start downloading stuff in the background right here. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. If I were to press this open button right here, so you see up here, it says the content is downloading. And it actually started out right here, and it's still actually downloading right here. Pretty cool feature for apps that require extra stuff to download, like Plants vs. Zombies. And we also have this with my other game on my phone, Mario Kart. For the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, we got the camera issue fixed right here. So if you're skeptical about update to iOS 16.1 on iPhone 14 Pro because of the camera issue, that is now resolved as confirmed with other iPhone 14 Pro owners. And I actually feel more comfortable getting an iPhone 14 Pro now than any other time. If we were to play a YouTube video right here, you'll notice that the icons are now no longer have a background. So you see the X button doesn't have a background. This button right here doesn't have a background to go back to the app. And these buttons, I believe these never had backgrounds, but I could be wrong here. They no longer have backgrounds right there, and it just looks a lot better in my opinion. We were going to settings right here and go back to wallpaper. You notice this got changed up a bit. We're now able to set our wallpaper, so if I wanted this to be my wallpaper, it now is my wallpaper. If I wanted this to be my wallpaper, that is now my wallpaper. They're just a lot more seamless than updating wallpapers in iOS 16.1 Beta 3. The customize button used to be down here, but now it is on the lock screen right here. I know this add new wallpaper button was like scrunched up a little bit, so it was not centered and it bothered me a little bit. Glad Apple has redesigned this and it looks a lot better in my opinion. I also like that you can go inside of settings. That gives me a little bit of hope that live wallpapers will come back when haptic pressing. Hopefully we get that in maybe 16.2 or something. Now for iPads, we got a feature added and a feature removed. So for the M1 iPads, you are no longer able to use external displays. It kind of beats the whole point of Stage Manager. And going back to Stage Manager right here, it is now available on all the iPad Pro models starting with the 2018. So hopefully we get it with the 2020 iPad Air and my iPad Mini, because I do not want to buy a new iPad just for Stage Manager, to be honest. Hopefully Stage Manager comes to more devices. As I said, multitasking is pretty easy to add, especially on the iPad. Since it can already multitask three apps, why would four apps hurt? Adding this multitasking feature makes the iPad Pro 2018 and 2020 more like a computer. It's not exclusive to the M1 iPads. It really should come to more iPads, to be honest, because Apple has been advertising those as a computer, and don't mind my Apple Pencil right here. Decide to snap in half. A little change, we will go to Settings, General. We notice that we no longer have Matter Accessories right here. For some reason, Apple has removed this. Now, this doesn't mean that Matter Accessories are removed. It's just kind of weird, in my opinion, that is in the Settings app. It's actually in the Home app now, Well, it's not what you think it would be. You are still able to pair Matter Accessories. You are always supposed to do it within the Home app right here. It's just they're all now with the HomeKit devices. Pretty good that Apple has moved them there. Now if we talk about CarPlay right here, Apple did address a few issues with CarPlay. One of the notable ones inside of Beta 2 was that car calls would be in very low volume. It's pretty good that Apple has improved this inside of Beta 3. If we were to take off the release notes right here, you'll notice that we got a resolved issue related to Home, the same one we got with Mac OS. And we have the same known issues right here. And this memory allocation issue is still here as well. So once Apple fixes this major issue, it seems major, it might not be. For some reason, I have not been experiencing anything. Apple probably does not need to fix these since a lot of people don't use Home. Hopefully, Apple does fix these though, to be honest, since it would be nice to have 16.1 with no bugs at all. I'm gonna run a quick Geekbench test right here. All right, so we got a 
1743 on the single core and a 4613 on the multi core. Now, comparing that to 16.1 beta 2, we got a 1735 on the single core and a 4587 on the multi core. Comparing it to iOS 16 right here, you can see that it is starting to get pretty close. So, hopefully, we get our performance on par. Actually, it looks like the single core is faster. This is the fastest it has been in iOS 16. So, 4613 and a 4645. All we need is this multi core score to improve. Single core is higher. Now, talk about battery life. I've been using this for a day and battery life seems to be pretty good. I've used this phone all day and it's still sitting at 37% not as good as iOS 15 in my experience but hopefully it gets better if you want to know my battery health here it is right here now let's talk about clean energy charging. Clean energy charging doesn't seem to be affecting the iPhone's battery performance at all. It seems to be remaining about the same, if not completely the same. I've not experienced any slow charging. <laughs> iOS 16.1 Beta 3 is a pretty solid update. I think it's better than 16.0 initial release currently. So hopefully things get better and better every day. So thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share it with your friend. I'll see you next week with iOS 16.1 Beta 4. Bye! Thank you.